Hello and welcome to my watch reviews. Well, Sam Martin have sent me some of their latest models to review just in time for the latest AliExpress sale, which I believe is mid-June. So I'm going to try and pump out some videos for you guys to see so you can look at all these different models and make up your own opinion of them. So we're starting with this one, the SN0111GA. This is a reiteration of something they've done previously with a few upgrades. Now, as always, I'm going to be truthful and honest with you. This is going to be filmed outside because outside shows no prisoners and shows the watch in its best light, I feel. But I'm not done then. I'm going to put it under the microscope too, where we can have a real close macro look at everything to see how good that finishing is, whether we could see any good or bad points as well. So if that sounds like your type of review, then stay tuned because I'm starting it right now. Here we go outside and you get your first look at this watch and it looks fantastic, let's face it. But there is one massive elephant in the room and of course that is the borrow design. Probably the most borrow design there has ever been on a watch. So as long as you're comfortable with the uh, lack of originality, then you'll have no problem with this watch. As always with San Martin, you get a lot for your money. This one is packed with all of the goodies, plus you get that San Martin excellent finishing. And it's got a few extras with this one too, some new upgrades. So let's start with the dimensions. This is a 40 millimeter diameter watch. That is excluding that rather protruding iconic crown guard. Uh, it is 47.5 millimeters lug to lug. You've got female end links there as well, which is going to help contour on the wrist for sizing. It's a 13.2 millimeters thick, so not too thick. It will fit under your cuffs as well. 20 mil lug width. Now, ironically, those dimensions are exactly the right dimensions. So I've measured them personally, and for once on San Martin's listing, they are correct on there too. So 10 out of 10 for that, Sam Martin. However, here you see the first problem, or the problem I've got trying to film outside. Uh, I have to try and shield the light. This watch is extremely reflective, despite it having anti-reflective coating on the crystal. The uh, bezel is, uh, well, high gloss. You've got an enamel dial. I mean, great, it's got an enamel dial. We'll be looking at that more closely. But as a result, we've got this sort of washed out look, unfortunately. So some of this review is going to be of shots like this. And some will be slightly covered where I'm just trying to show you the features. So please bear with me. It hasn't been the best one to record at all. So it's all about the looks with this one. And like I've said, it's got this ceramic bezel. I think a lot of San Martins have got ceramic bezels now. It's high gloss, so it shows up fingerprints. I can see one there about 11 o'clock. You've got a loom pip at 12. It's a unidirectional 120 click. I will show you the clicks a little bit later in the video. Looking more closely at the dial, while well, this one has got the Mercedes set of hands, you can also get these with a plain sword hands as well, should you choose. Uh, you've got applied indices throughout. What is great about it, it's a no date uh, watch. It is an NH35 movement, so you do have a ghosting position on the crown, but having no date means you've got no cyclops, which means you've got symmetry throughout, and I really do enjoy that. This one comes with an enameled dial, so enameling is basically the molten glass, for want of a better word. It gives that perfect luster and uh, is as old as watchmaking itself really. Enamel dials have been around for a very, very long time. Uh, should be pretty much flawless and we'll be looking that much closely at the microscope because I'm keen to see how good they have done it. Finishing the dial off, well, there's a basic minute track. You've got the applied logo at 12 with the San Martin uh, embossed into it, which I personally like. Then down at six, it says automatic and it's 300 meters of water resistance, allegedly. Really reminds me that I've got to fix my water testing machine so we can test these watches properly on the channel. Moving on to the loom shot and a quick blast with the UV pen. Shows this has got BGW9. It's a light blue hue to it, although the camera seems to give it a bit more of a greenish tinge. This is a time lapse over 20 minutes. 
I think it did okay. It seems to fade quite a lot and then sort of stay faded for ages. Uh, not the best I've seen, uh, but pretty decent all the same. Here we are looking at it from the side. You can see that the crown guards there are highly polished on the outside edges. It's brushed uh, on the inside of the case there and there's a very, very slight taper that you can see towards the lugs. Chamfer running across the edge of the case which is highly polished. Very easy grippable bezel. The typical sign crown, screw down crown that you see all the time now on San Martins. Flip it over to the other side and again just nice clean brushing all the way along that edge. So again can't fault, never can fault San Martin for their case finishing. So to prove that point further, look at this angle here. So you've got that nice brushed finishing to the bracelet. The bracelet's got high polished sides to it, but just how it all sort of melts into one with that blended polished chamfer across the case there as well. Um, yeah, I'd love to find a fault. I'm always looking for a fault, but so far I just can't find one. Well, I said I can't find a fault. I can always find a fault with San Martin's case backs. I mean, yes, it is, again, really well executed and perfect in many ways, but there's just nothing on there. And uh, I find that a real shame and a missed opportunity. I'd like to see at least some inscription in there, model number or whatever. Uh, come on, you can do a little bit better than this plane. It's just trying to homage too much the original. So before I take the watch to the bench and dissect it a little bit more, here it is on my 7 inch or 18 centimeter wrist. What do you think? I think it looks okay, nice for size. So with that, let's go to the bench. Okay, watch in hands, excuse my fingers. First of all, the alignment of the bezel, I think that's pretty spot on. One click that way, you can see it's quite obviously off. The action, that's 120 click. Uh, rotating bezel there sounds nice feels nice and easy to do and uh, yeah pleased with that my main negative which I'll talk about shortly reflection reflection is everywhere however I do like the bracelets on San Martins always a nice brushing doesn't come out in this light very well and side high polished I have been wearing this watch for a number of days now, so the polishing is looking a bit greasy. Uh, the last thing to show you really is this new glide lock system that they've got for adjusting. There's a little thing under here, you probably can't see it. It says push. So you push that and you can adjust to your heart's content where you want it. I've always got to remove three links for my wrist size from this type of bracelet and then you're always messing around with the ladders to get it right so i do like this system however there is one slight drawback that is the length if we put it against one of their typical clasps line the two up side by side so it's a good i don't know uh eight ten millimeters uh longer this one so you've got to be able to, to live with that. More surface area to scratch. This always gets scratched, doesn't it? And that's the bit that touches your desk and anything else that you do. But I do like it. It's progress. San Martin keep do keep showing us progress with what they like to do, despite, obviously, my other reservation, which, of course, is that design. So what I want to do now is put it on the microscope. I'm dying to see the enamel dial up close, see if there's any imperfections. I'm going to have a quick look at the movement while we're there as well. Here we are on the microscope and I think I should do macro shots before I wear the watch. It's now showing off all of the dirt and grime built up over it over the last week or so that I've been wearing this. So in a minute, I'm going to take the movement out of the case so we can see the dial much better. Um, it's having to be in low light conditions because of the sheer reflection you get. But you can see kind of the level of detail you're getting with the uh, bezel there. That looks pretty decent. Here's the case finishing. Clearly done by a machine. You can see when you get really close up, they're not as linear as you would like. And that's very, very typical of this type of finish. 
Uh, I do this type of work sometimes in my day job and uh, know very well what sort of products are used to make that finish happen. Here's the high polished chamfer that runs along the case. And again, in macro, that's done very well. Still a little bit of dazzle over to the crown as well. You can see even inside the bezel here, as much as there's all the dirt, the insides are polished. The outside there is brushed. So I think that's pretty decent. Of course, you want to see that blurred bit there, which is going to be the dial. And I'm going to take the movement out and we're going to have a look closer up. So just thought I'd show you the movement. I wasn't going to particularly, but I've removed the case back. And yes, that's a typical uh, NH35, but look at that rotor. First thing I noticed, all of those marks. Now then, that is not good. I'm gonna use a bit of roddy coat just to see if that will come off. And it doesn't look like it will there. Get a bit of peg wood. I need two pieces of pegwood because I need to hold it still. Yeah, that's going to come off. That's fine. But whatever that is, you shouldn't be seeing that on a movement and a movement that's been put in by Sam Martin and gone through inspection as well, allegedly. Um, that is poor practice. That could corrode eventually or as you've just seen, it comes off doesn't take much of that little bit of dirt to find its way into the movement. Certainly if it falls down here by the balance into the escape, it's going to stop it. Uh, so yes, surprised to see that, not happy to see that. I'll now have to remove that rotor and clean it uh, just so that I know I'm putting it back in better than it came in the watch. Here we are at a level of magnification that I don't think any manufacturer would be happy with the reviewer showing. Uh, also the trade-off at such magnification is light. So I've got a lot of light shining on this, but the reflective surfaces show up as black. Um, and why am I this close? I don't really need to be this close, uh, not for a watch like this. This watch uh, is a budget watch at the end of the day, so we're not gonna be looking for perfection. Uh, but if we start looking at the indices, um, what do we think? Well, the machine made these. I've seen them on many different watches, not just Sam Martin's. And they must be just mass produced in a factory somewhere um, and then stuck on the watches themselves. Any of the little speckles you can see, or a lot of these speckles of dust, are actually detritus falling on it literally as we speak. Um, again, this macro level is going to hide no prisoners. If we look at the hands here, the loom is applied very well. The hands are stamped and that's why they look like they've got slightly frayed or rough edges. Again, you can't see that with the naked eye. Second hand looks all right. There's a little mark there, which is a mark. I've already tried to remove what I thought was a bit of dust there. You see, it doesn't come off. Where is that on the dial? Most likely will, there you go. So you can see what also looks like sort of scratch marks as well. I guess that's just the finishing of the dial. You again are never going to see that with your eyes, but there is some slight imperfections and I'm going to try and show you one now. So if you look below that indice, index even, and it looks almost, if I try and get it into focus, looks almost like a bubble. There you go. And that is an imperfection in the enameling. There's also one just over there to one side. But when I inspect the rest of the dial using that sort of light reflection, I don't really see any. There's a hair there. There is one slight one just there. I'm going the wrong way I'm focusing. That's definitely one. And maybe that one there. But again, what are we expecting? You know, I don't even think Swiss manufacturers would like us doing this too much this close. But it's interesting all the same to see it, isn't it? Let's face it, the finishing on that badge is lovely, all highly polished. And then that sort of shot blasted at the base. Very good. The printing uh, on the minute markers as well. Well, it's fairly uniform. 
and again I don't think we can look for perfection we're just looking for something that would draw our naked eye and again there's the printing at six so there we go that's what it looks like on a microscope really really close up don't think you'll see many reviewers doing this um, certainly taking it out of the case voids any warranty in a way uh, but I'm not worried about that is to really show you the watch and give my opinion really or let you make your own opinion so uh, if you'd like seeing a movement well a dial so close up you want to see this in more of my reviews then please let me know I'm more than happy to take just about anything out of a case doesn't worry me at all other than the fact that I've now got to spend probably half an hour trying to pick off all these little bits of dust um, and then try and clean that rotor as well uh, there we go making a start already none of them picked up either <laughs> there we go right back to the rest of the review while we're on the microscope I wanted to show you another strange thing so you're looking at the end of the clasp this is where the shell would attach to and uh, there's no micro adjust this is just because of the, the glide lock system uh, so what you would expect to see or what I expected to see in here is a spring bar but to remove it because I always have to remove these because I like to lie the watch out flat for when I do the reviews um, this is what I found inside and at first I thought well it's a spring bar that's just broken I guess sometimes they do break uh, but no it's not a spring bar that's just broken this is purpose that is a solid steel bar look so there's no tube the spring is exactly the same size as that so how it's constructed to go in is like this I'm not going to bother putting that bit on the end you get the gist so why would you use that I wonder you can buy spring bars I've got a whole packet of them here single shoulders at the end which is what you need for clasps always 16 millimeters in general and here's one out of the packet so why would you have this set up if anybody wanted to take their watch apart like I did um, you're going to struggle to be honest to get that back in there um, because it's always going to want to fall out because of the spring so is it a strength thing so it, this isn't going to move around whereas the ends of spring bars do move around uh, but I'd be more well I'd be more normal if that failed it's easy to, to repair this but you'd lose these parts so I'm at a bit of a loss is it just somebody being lazy on the day and fitting it I you know Sam Martin are not fitting a spring bar there for a particular reason and I'm hoping Perhaps they're watching this video and they can email me and tell me the reason why you would set it up like that because yeah a real mystery I'm sorry this video is probably going on far too long uh, just for one review but I think this is important to show you that because it's rather odd leave your comments below if you understand why they would do that time graph of time 53 degrees NH35 usually see beat error of some degree or another we always know what we're going to get with these movements and there we go that's pretty decent point one that's acceptable from my point of view decent enough amplitude rate could be doing with being fast rather than slow but i'll take four seconds a day any day of the week now i should leave this on here for ages and check all the positions but i'm well aware that this review is getting far too long and we all know really these movements are good enough for this type of watch so let's bring this video to some sort of conclusion let's sum this watch up firstly by talking about the price so as of today may the 31st this watch is on their aliexpress store for 187 uk pounds which translates into 231 dollars thereabouts plus any taxes in your country should you wish to buy one there will be links below they are affiliate links so anything you buy through those links i will earn a small finder's fee 
four won't cost you any more and hopefully Sam, Ma Sam Martin will have given me a discount code which they've been promising me which will also be in the description box below. There is an AliExpress sale coming mid-June and that's the time to go and buy any watches from AliExpress because that's when they're on at their cheapest deals or should be so keep watching this one because it might drop even further who knows. So the good and the bad. Well let's start with the good it's a San Martin, so you get in that known quality. The finishing is nothing short of epic. I think for the sub £200 mark, you'd be struggling to find anything better than this. You know, sapphire crystal, you've got a ceramic bezel, you've got that enamel dial as well, and then you've got the new glide lock system. So they're offering a heck of a lot for the money. And for that, um, yeah, I don't think it can be beaten, in all honesty, and I'm sure just about everybody else will say that. Uh, for San Martin. But of course the negatives are, well, originality. This is probably the most homage design in the watch world ever. And um, I'm not really a fan of that, uh, certainly not this design. I never have been. It doesn't really float my boat particularly. I've enjoyed wearing this one and uh, getting to know it. Um, but I just don't see the attraction of that design. Uh, I do believe really that the original watches that they're all uh, aspiring to be is more of a status symbol than actually clever watchmaking or anything else like that. Uh, so that's my take on it. Uh, the other negative really is the result in having that high gloss um, ceramic bezel plus the enamel dial is that you get a lot of dazzle of this. The light reflects off it all over the place. It's been very very difficult to film where I can get a good uh, clear shot of it. And likewise, when you're out and about, you know, it is a bit blingy in that respect. And um, yeah, maybe I like a bit more of a subdued watch. Um, so that is another negative for me. And then finally, that spring bar thing. You know, I've got it now in a little, little container here. What on earth is that? You know, that's really weird. I'm hoping this isn't one off. I'm hoping soon that maybe they send me another watch with a glide lock on it and I can remove the same uh, spring bar to to see if it's just a fluke uh, whether they're not using original or proper spring bars so it's definitely a negative because if that fails uh, then you lose your whole watch and I don't know if you're on a boat with your hand over the rails well you're never going to see your watch again are you it's just going to sink to the bottom of the ocean so yeah yeah not happy with that at all um, so yeah there we go there's the pluses and there's the minuses um, that's the end of this review. You will see quite a few San Martin reviews coming from me in the next couple of weeks, and that's purely just to coincide with the sale. I've got they've sent me a few to get through, and I want to show you them all now while the going's good. Because if you do like any of them, this is the time to pick them up. Then after that, back to the vintage stuff because I've got some more of my own personal watches that I want to show you. However, those videos don't seem to get the views, uh, which is quite sad, really. Um, if you want to see a bit more of me, then head over to the main channel, My Retro Watches. There you'll see me restoring old vintage watches, taking them apart and putting them back together. Uh, always nice to see new folk over there. Um, you can check me out on Instagram, My Retro Watches. I post as much as I can about what I'm doing or what I'm working on at the time. Uh, so you can find me there if you need to see me more. Uh, other than that, I will see you in the next review. Thanks very much for watching this one. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave comments below. I do read them all and I try to reply to as many as I can. And if you're new to this channel and you enjoyed this review, then please consider subscribing because I could do with more subscribers. But that way also you get to see more realistic reviews that I like to do. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.